thank you very much, uh, Professor Ali, for the introduction. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I just would like to ask uh, how long, how much time I have? 30 minutes. Uh, sorry, uh, 30 minutes. Yes. 30 minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, good. Uh, uh, we are we here, we are afternoon. So good morning there in Morocco and uh, good morning in Europe. So we have uh, now we are almost five uh, twenty in the afternoon. So uh, my presentation it's um, is about the the role of power electronics in providing a sustainable energy supply. I think uh, my the previous presenters have shown uh, the increase of. Uh, power electronics in our modern grids and also our modern um, uh, utility supplies. So I'm going just to enforce this. Uh, this. Okay, so the outline of my presentations will be uh, energy and environments, challenges in energy, uh, sustainable energy, and then challenges in energy conservations and uh, the grand challenge. Okay, as we... Um, we all know the world population um, uh, is growing and it will be around 9 billion by 2050. So this is a fact, taking the current uh, uh, growth rate. Also, what is uh, very important is the energy consumption will be double by 2050. So uh, the world population will grow by almost 30%, uh, but the energy consumption per person will increase significantly. And this is a fact also, because if we look into our daily use of energy, it's increasing day after day. Uh, if you look 30 years back or 40 years back, uh, the energy consumption per person is very limited. However, we can see nowadays that every, every person, the consumption of energy is increasing. You can see every person have a laptop, every person have a mobile phone, every person uh, every home have washing machine, air conditioning system, everything. So what does this mean? It means that our energy consumption is increasing and it's going to be continue increasing. What is else also very important, 65% of global warming is coming from energy generation and energy use. So the way how we use the energy, the way how we generate energy is not efficient enough. It means there are lots of emissions, steel, are uh, still generated during the process of generation and the process of utilization. Okay, uh, also we, we, we see this, uh, some of the impact of greenhouses. You know, we see that uh, there's extreme weather conditions. I say extreme means, uh, you can see there is winters, very harsh winters or sometimes very warm winters. We see sea level rise. There are many locations around the globe which uh, sees uh, what we call uh, sea level rise. And also we, we see in the past 50 years, the world has lost more than 25% of its top soil and forests due to uh, human being activities. What is most importantly at the emission, the current emission rates, the coral reefs and the polar ecosystems will be severely affected by 2050 and it becomes irreversible. It means after that, whatever you do, uh, we'll have no uh, major impact. Okay. Uh, acid also is not actually uh, infecting only the ground, but also affecting the, the seas and the oceans. The acid levels, the acid levels is in continuously increasing. And you can see here the acid levels uh, 30, 30 years ago, now, and what will be in the future. The darker color means the acid level will be increasing and increasing. Okay. So what, whenever we open our TVs every day, either we see these kind of pictures, floods in many locations, which never experienced flood before, or we see these pictures, we see a drought where many areas are having less water access in areas which used to be very green. Earth temperature, also earth temperature is increasing. I think uh, the last, uh, Paris uh, summit has already notified this and it continues to increase. And um, even some very cold places, Europe, uh, Europe used to be one of the coldest places, you know, but it's not anymore. In 2011, more than 20,000 people died of heat waves in Europe. 
Okay, so this actually shows the increase of the, the temperature uh, on the Earth. You know, so we need to do something about it. So the challenges. Challenges is renewable energy and energy conservation. So renewable energy, I think uh, we we are all well versed, and also it's well known, and also it's already shown the the app, it can replace the conventional sources. But what is missing here? It's the energy conservation. We have less people talking about energy conservation. Energy conservation is something that we should do before start thinking of renewables or something of other sources. Energy conservation is the use of energy efficiently and effectively. That is the most important because we may think, okay, yes, we want to go for renewables. We want to install certain amount of PV panels, certain amount of wind turbines, but the way how we are still consuming and using this energy is not efficiently. It does not make any difference because the total consumption will increase. So energy conservation is a practice that we should always, always do. And I really like the this statement by the ex uh, US president, Jimmy Carter, not the current one. Uh, the current one, you know, is totally the opposite. Energy conservation is an act of patriotism. Means if you really love your country, if you really care about your country, you should do what I call uh, and practice energy conservation. Okay, so that's the way. The way is, for example, if you if you want to uh, what you call, uh, turn on an air conditioning system, why you have to set the temperature at 16 degrees or 17 or 18? We know the, the, the comfortable temperature is 24 degrees or 25 degrees. So that's how, if you leave a room, you should switch off the lights. Yeah, so that's the way how we should think. For renewables, Okay, I think God has given us a large amount of resources. You can see the amount of uh, uh, energy available only from the sun is more than 2,850 times. The wind, 200 times. It means if we use only 0.5% uh, of what is wind provided, it's enough to supply of what we need energy globally. And uh, I already showed this picture. This picture is actually uh, an airplane which took off uh, last last year from Abu Dhabi and it makes one big round across the globe and land back. This is shows actually this one day maybe some part of our airplanes and uh, now most of the new airplanes are, are more electric. Maybe some part of it will be powered by, uh, by renewables. Doesn't matter what types of renewables, you know, it can be a biodiesel, it can be a can be solar, can be whatever, you know, but it's uh, some of the energy consumed Maybe it will be from, uh, from uh, okay. and uh, this is the interesting study done by uh, uh, a manufacturer of solar cells, QCell. QCell is a Korean um, solar manufacturer. This Korean uh, solar manufacturer uh, done a study in 2017. And if they found out actually if we install certain this amount of solar, I think uh, this is near Morocco or Algeria. If we install this amount of solar panel, it's enough to supply the whole world of electricity. If we install this amount, it will be enough to supply the whole mean the whole EU, you know, the European Union. If we, we install this, it's enough to supply the whole MENA region, the Middle East and North Africa. Maybe uh, maybe they are just doing a promotion for their solar panels, but. Uh, uh, for me, let's make this double or triple or maybe four times or five times. It means it still makes some sense. It means there is a lot of resources that we can still use. And nowadays we can see there's a large amount of solar also moving into hybrid where, uh, for example, you have dams and uh, on the top of the dams where you can have uh, solar panels. So we can generate, uh, you can optimize the space and the area used because one of the reason, one of the problems with solar is the the space utilizations. And also there is, a, you can see there is a very bright future actually. The improvement of the solar cells efficiency is keep increasing year after year. Also the cost of the solar panels is decreasing also year by year. 
And uh, just to show you this, this is quite important figure, you know, it's um, on the role of power electronics in photovoltaic system. You can see uh, whatever range from um, what level, from 50 watt to 100 watt to 200 watts up to kilowatt levels, all requires power electronics interface. Okay, so whatever you, you use or whatever you do in photovoltaic systems, you still need power electronics. Without power electronics, all these devices will never work. And uh, also when you want to interface with the grid, the same things, we need the power electronics. Wind, also the same wind turbines. I think the recent wind turbine, the 9.5 megawatts, wind turbine, the largest in the world, you know, 9.5 megawatt. It, and it's growing 30 year, 30% 30 every year. And these wind turbines are 100% now uh, powered by power electronics converters, okay? And also it's increasing year after year, the capacity. And this is shows the, the, in, the use or the introduction of power electronics in the wind turbines. You can see uh, recently 100% of the, the wind turbines or the power is processed through the power electronics converters. Yeah, I think there is a lot of research also on the type of wind turbines, which uh, can be used, especially on the rooftop of buildings. And this is shows also that the, the role of power electronics in renewables is in, in wind turbines is also an important component. Yeah, this is how uh, the existing and the future potential configuration of wind farms. You can see nowadays most of them will be uh, uh, full scale power converters AC or either AC or DC grids. Both of them requires uh, what we call power electronics. So. We can conclude from this too, the main major renewables are dependent on power electronics devices. So uh, to go back to our main objective of the emissions and the generations, if you, this, this is a study done by uh, this paper published in Science on the, the relationship between the generations and also the emissions. And here you can see, if we continue business as usual, the generations will continue to increase uh, as uh, linearly. You can see here, it's going to increase linearly. But if we decided, for example, to, to stop or to, re, to maintain the emission level constant, all right, we need this, what they call the green color uh, triangle here, which is the, call it the stabilization triangle. This stabilization triangle will help us in continuing the emission, uh, sorry, uh, continuing the generation increasingly, increasing the generations, but the emissions remain constant. Okay, so what is required? And this is the base year. The base year depends, wh whatever year you choose. If you choose, for example, 2020, so you the triangle will be this, all right? So what is required to stabilize the emission and continue the generations. This is what we have to do. One, install 1 million two megawatts wind turbine. Okay, two megawatts means almost 300 times the current capacity. Two, install around 3000 gigawatt peak of solar power or what is equivalent to 215 times the current capacity. Three, install 700 gigawatt of nuclear power plants. Okay, one nuclear power plant usually of, of the size of one gigawatt, All right? Well, you may ask questions, why do we need the nuclear power plant? Nuclear power plant is one of the most reliable so far uh, source of electricity generation. And we need this kind of energy mix in order for us to maintain the, the stability of the system. Increase the fuel economy of 2 billion cars from 30 to 60 miles per gallon. So the, our current IC engine, the internal combustion engine is not efficient. We need to improve the current uh, IC engine or maybe shift to more uh, electric cars, either hybrid or electric, because the, simply because the, the emission levels, cut the, the emission from the building by 25% by 2025. 
and also introduce what you call carbon capture and storage of almost 800 gigawatt coal fired power plants, which is equivalent to uh, 800 nuclear power plants. So my question is, is this doable? If you ask me personally, I, I think these numbers are too big. You know, it's too big, you know, too big and too, too, too costly to, to implement because it's something very, very huge, 300 times the current capacity. It's not easy, you know. To reach the current capacity, it took us 20, 30 years. To double or to make this double or triple, maybe, but to make it 300 times, it looks like it. So it's not almost, it's impossible actually. So what does means impossible? Means the emission level will continue to increase as we increase our consumption and our generation. All right. So let's look into this, give you a simplified, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, figure of our current energy supply system. Okay, if you look into here, the the uh, called the left hand side is the generations, and this is the the load or the use. What you can see here, we are seeing more power electronics in every thing that we use. Solar, as we said just now, it's more dependent on uh, on the converters. Uh, if you have storage, we also we need power electronics. Wind, you need power electronics. A fuel cell, a hydrogen based technology, which requires a power electronics. So, what does it mean? The generation is almost 100% dependent on power electronics at, the, at this moment. And that the same things applies for loads. For example, if you go and purchase a fridge today, yeah, you need an inverter based fridge. You buy a TV. A TV is an LED TV, which is power electronics driven. You buy lights which is an LED light, a motor drive, robots, a phone charger, laptop, desktop, whatever, just name it, all are power electronics driven. So the idea is here, if we make an efficiency improvement on of all these converters and inverters that's used either in the generation side or in the distribution side or in the load side, a small percentage will be very significant improvement. Because if you ask, maybe maybe we can, if for example, if we do the improvement of an LED driver, which an driver an LED lights, by just one percent, multiply that one percent by billions of light bulbs that exist in the world, and you can see the amount of saving that can be generated from this kind of technology. So that's actually my main focus point. My focus point is how we can use polytronics to provide a sustainable energy supply. Actually, through this, by we seeing this from the generation side and from the load side, you can see actually there is a huge potential for power electronics to, to play a major role in providing sustainable energy supply. Yeah, wind, as we know, the interface from the wind to the grid is all uh, power electronics. I think I have mentioned this, but it's whatever power you, you see, uh, maybe I, because of the time storage, whatever is all power electronics interface. Uh, even for power quality improvements, we need the uh, what we call statcoms, which actually power electronic devices. Okay, let's take this, uh, the total energy consumption on the world. You know, uh, current, uh, uh, it's around 40% of the current energy consumption is electric. 60% is still non-electric, okay? So most of the energy that we use today is still non-electric, okay? Because you have to see the factories, the, because 60% of the energy is consumed in the industrial sector. So most of it is still non-electric, 40%. Okay, the, what does this 40%? In 2012, which is eight years back, which is quite old, we have consumed more than 20,000 trillion watt hour of electricity worldwide. What does this mean? This is a nuclear power plant. An average nuclear power plant, usually a nuclear power plant of one gigawatt, able to generate around seven trillion watt hour of energy per year. Seven trillion watt hour per year. So if you divide 20,000 per seven, you will find, means in 2012, we have consumed more than what's produced by 3,000 nuclear power plants of electricity. 
So it's a huge amount of uh, consumption. Uh, at the moment, 2020, you just simply multiply it by another factor of 1.5 easily. All right. So if we, we break that 40%, you can see it's, uh, it's mainly consumed um, uh, in the motor drive, which is actually industries, the IT, light, and others. Okay. So if we just make 1% one one efficiency improvement in these others, we can actually save what's equivalent to 23 nuclear power plants, which is almost a total power generated by wind in 2012. You can see the current system. This is the current system. Usually what we have, we have the grid, we have the PV, we have the wind, we have the storage, we have electric vehicles. So what we do from the solar, we convert from DC to DC and then from DC to AC and then connect to the grid. And then when we want to use them, then we have to convert from AC back to uh, DC and then convert because most of these are already power electronics driven. So what you can see, we have an inverter here, we have another rectifier here and so on and so forth. So every conversion, as you know, we have losses. Uh, every inverter have a losses. There is no such inverter which works 100% efficiency. Even 99%, there is no inverter works at any load at 99%. Efficient, inverters has an efficiency curve and this efficiency changes depends on the load. So, so there is no, an average if efficiency on inverter maybe the best would be around 90 or 85% efficiency. So if we can remove all these inverters, and convert it to a DC bus. You can see the amount of efficiencies that you see. Just imagine how many inverters from the solar, how many inverters from the wind, how many inverters from the, the storage, how many inverters from the electric vehicles, and the same thing goes to the load. You can see it's a huge amount of saving. IT, IT, you see IT, we can see there's an increased number of IT devices nowadays. So there is an increase of, more, uh, what you call, if we just improve 1% efficiency improvement, so it's able us to save almost 20,000 trillion hour of energy, which is equivalent to three nuclear power plants. And you can see there's a large number of data centers nowadays, and there's a lot of demand of this cloud computing and so on and so forth. Actually, actually I have to skip this, but uh, yeah, because the time, I'm running off time, so I'm just giving you this example. This example actually, it's the power supply of our laptop chargers. This is the previous uh, hard switching uh, uh, charger. I'm oh, sorry, this is the hard switching charger. And then we have the soft switching charger. And you can see the improvement uh, of uh, just moving from soft switching to hard switching. You can see the amount of efficiency improvement from 85% to 95% within the span of four years. And this is saved as almost 60 nuclear power plants because you have to multiply how many laptops around the world and then how much the efficiency improvement of each, each one of them. Okay, so also the data centers, most of data centers now are moving into what you call DC, uh, DC data, data centers. This is the, the traditional AC data centers, okay? So the current one, which is start moving, one of them is Google, is almost moving to DC data set. And you can see the amount of conversion that we have reduced, which is almost 5% of energy saving, which is equivalent to 15 nuclear power plants. Light, one of the very important components. Light, if we just switch from this bulb to this bulb, we can save between four to five times of energy. If we switch to LED, another four times you imagine how many light bulbs are around the world. There are billions of light bulbs. So we can save almost 450 nuclear power plants. Motor drive, one of the biggest ones, the red color one, the big one. So as you know, if we assume 40% of the motor drives are already having VSD, maybe now 60% only needs a VSD or variable speed drives. So if we install the VSD, you can save almost 30% of energy. So it is equivalent to what is generated by 30 
at 300 nuclear power plants. So let's look into the industry is the same. I think we have seen just now, if we move to more electric cars, more uh, ships, more aircrafts, buses, and so on and so forth, we can save a lot of power electronics. And how about if we you can see this 6040, if we switch to this, we can easily save almost 1,000 nuclear power plants. Means moving from electric, from non-electric to electrics, actually we can save a lot of energy. I think the previous presentations also mentioned this in many locations. Okay, and this is another example which is proved this. So if we have a, a, an IC car, which is internal combustion engine car. And then we do the oil, a refinery, and then we boot. And then this usually take us around um, for uh, uh, 670 miles per barrel of oil, 600. If we do the same, we just change this car to electric. We can go to 1,100 miles more. So it's almost 65% energy saving. How about if this switch to wind? It's a huge amount of saving that we can introduce. And this is just to show you that the world is moving more to electric. I think this is the, the energy flow diagram in the, of the United States in 2009. You can see the percentage of electric is only 40%. The other 60% is non-electric. This is what they plan. Huh? They are planning for the next, by 2035, 80% of their energy consumption will be electric. 20% will be non-electric. Okay, I think, uh, so my question is, uh, do we still need more power electronics or more nuclear power plants? And I think I'm ready to take some questions. Thank you.